Good afternoon, Kayla Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge, Day 38. So we are continuing our series on designs, and so we're going to jump into the design submenu. Again, kind of the drawing pad and pencil here on the left-hand side. And wanted to explore a little bit more in the WeBrand editor. So we're going to go ahead and click on this plus sign. I'm going to do a social media design, just as kind of an example, and uh, create that design. And I'm just going to choose a template to kind of show you a couple of different things uh, as well to continue our education on how we can utilize WeBrand and all the power that it has. So I'm going to choose this come on in and stay a while template down here, kind of fourth row down, fourth column over. And I've done the Facebook version of that template. And so in our previous video, we uh, covered all of the menu items that were here on this left hand side, um, kind of all of these different categories of items that can be added. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the toolbar here at the very top. So the first option is drawing. When you click on drawing, um, there are some uh, kind of similarities to shapes and some others. So essentially I could drop in a square, but instead of dropping the square like it's going to do in shapes, I can actually layer that square where I want it and then kind of, you know, draw in a couple more. And once I'm done with that, then I can come in and actually move them around should I need to. So you can basically drawing, you're deciding where you want that object instead of just dropping it in the middle and having to resize it. Same thing applies for all of the rest. So if I want to do an ellipses, I can do that. And if I want to bring in um, path is kind of interesting. So path allows you to create some really interesting geographic uh, geometric shapes, right? So you can just kind of draw the lines around until you're done. And I want to, so maybe if you're highlighting a specific uh, spot or something along those lines, you know, if you were on a map or, um, you know, just want to get real creative, you could do that. You can come in and change the opacity right now. I could make that even lighter if I wanted to. Well, I guess I can't. Let me see if it'll let me do reposition there we go there it is now we have the ability to change the opacity it's at 50 percent i could make it really dark i could make it really light right so you can see kind of as you change that and we've played with that before so uh, the last thing here in drawing is the pin so if i wanted to um i basically could i don't know maybe i'm going to circle the fruit bowl Right, look at this amazing fruit bowl, whatever, right? So you have the ability to come in and actually draw with a kind of pencil-esque icon. So if I, like I use a surface, um, if I had my surface stylus, I could actually draw and then maybe I'm signing something. Maybe I want to write in my actual font, my script, the way that I write something on there. A lot of different options within drawings. It's kind of uh, fun to do the pen icon and make it custom yours. In addition, you have shapes. So here is a variety of different shapes that you can drop in. Now drawing, we were actually sizing and deciding where we wanted it. When we do shapes, it just drops that shape literally right in the middle and then we're gonna have to move it over and then we're gonna have to resize it if we want to. So a couple of different things that we have to do when we're using shapes versus actually drawing that shape in. Um, so same thing applies for all the different shapes. So if I want to drop a triangle, it's just going to drop it right in the middle and then I'm going to have to come in and play with it, resize it, you know, change the different things that I want to change on that. Um, if I want to, I can come up here. We played with opacity. If I want to make that kind of see-through, I can change the opacity there. If I want that to be um, a different color. So you do have your own ability to create your library of colors. This is the default palette. So these are actually all of the KW approved colors. So if you're looking for KW red, KW gray, um, et cetera, and then you can choose your library colors and have those available here. So that's again, when we were playing with library earlier in the challenge, um, that's where your colors will show up. You can always just pick a color too and say, I want this color. And that's the color that you would then have. Let's see, change that. There we go and I click on apply and why is it not changing? Let's see, do that, apply, oh, that's weird. It looks like it's not wanting to change the color, but we'll, let's get out of the library. Let's close that. Choose color, there we go. Let me come down to choose color. I wanna do pink and I'm gonna do pink and apply. Well, 
Sometimes it works and sometimes a few things don't work. So that would be the ability and I've done it before. I'm just not sure why it's not working today, but probably something that I'm doing on my end, honestly. Um, frames is more for dropping in pictures with a unique kind of um, style of the photo. So if I just drop in this square image placeholder, I can do that and then I can drag over my headshot and when I drag it over this placeholder, it's going to be sized immediately that way, exactly the same size as that square is. I can do frames for like a star. If I just wanted to have some unique branding, I could come in, drop this star on the top, and then drop my image photo on there. There's the star. It doesn't look exactly that good, and yet, just to kind of show you what you can do, um, we could even do a heart. So let's put the heart in there. Uh, make that a little larger, make sure my headshot fits on it. And again, I could just drop in that picture there. So you can do that with any of your photos that you have brought in, right? So the kind of sky's the limit. Um, it doesn't have to be your headshot. Any other photo that you had brought in that you just wanted to put in there, you have the ability to drop in that frame and then drag the photo on top of the frame and it will then take the um, positioning and style of that actual frame. Next, we have text, very similar to text over here on the left-hand submenu. Um, you just have the ability to drop in different things just like you did on the left, so that really doesn't change a whole lot. Um, once I have that text, though, go through a few things here. You can change the font of the text. You can change the font size of the text. Uh, typewriter actually allows you to start typing it in and then save your changes, so I could change the text to this and say save changes and here you see there's my new text next I can make it bold pretty similar we guys are all familiar with this uh, this font doesn't have an italic font face so I can't change it to italics but I can underline if I wanted all uh, upper or all lowercase I could do this and then uh, the entire text is now in upper and if I say hey no I want it all lower I can do this and it changes everything there to lowercase of course, I can also change the color of the font. Let's see if this one's working. Click on that and apply. There we go. Not sure why the shapes aren't working, but the font definitely is. So you can see how easy it is to change that font color. Um, in addition, over here on the left-hand side, so you can make bullet points out of your font if you want. You can align the text. So let's say we want it centered or we want it right aligned. Maybe we want it justified. You can change even any of that. And this is a cool tool that I really enjoy using, especially when creating um, flyers and things like that, is you can play with the spacing. Say I want this font box, these words, to fill up this entire square, top to bottom, but I want it to look even, right? So let's see, let's pull this down here and let's move this over. Obviously this is not exactly how this would look. Let's just change this font size to maybe 16. No, that's not gonna work. Let's move it up to 36 or so. And let's say I wanted to space it out a little bit. You can see as I start moving this dot to the right, it starts adding space between the lines. So you can see that right here, right between these two lines. As I click on it, it's going to move it right and left. There are also some fonts, fonts excuse me, where you can change the spacing between the letters and you can actually change the spacing between the words. So it really depends on the font that you're working with, which spacing options that you're going to have. But that's where this spacing comes in. Um, as far as the, these three characters, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna do one more challenge here, probably tomorrow, and talk to you about moving in different graphics and then layering the graphics. And that's where these really come in, is um, arranging them, changing them, moving them top to bottom, kind of layering, like I said, the different fonts versus photos versus backdrops, all that kind of stuff. A couple things really quick to point out, and we'll wrap up this challenge. Down here at the bottom, there are several, um, Templates that have multiple pages. So think about postcards would have a front and a back. Um, we have our listing presentation. I think it's like 24 pages. Um, you know, it just kind of depends on what you're creating. If it's more than one page, then you could click here and it would start to show you page one, page two, page three, and you could move back and forth between those by clicking these arrows down here. Obviously this graphic is just one page. Typically multiple pages, those are gonna come into play when you're doing print assets versus social media. Down here at the bottom, you've got um, your pixel count. 
So to the left of zero, to the right of zero, if you want to kind of make sure that you're in you know, the exact same spot. Um, and then you can zoom in. So you have the ability to zoom in, to zoom out, or actually choose your specific zoom. Let's just say I want to get real granular. I could go all the way to 500. If I want to see the entire thing at once, I can do 50%, right? So a couple of different options with regards to zooming in and out. Um, up here at the top, so you have your undo, you have your redo, you have a previous version. So if you've actually come over and done file and save, <coughs> you can save this version and then you can do some stuff, right? Let me go in, I'm going to play with this, I'm going to remove that. And then I'm like, oh, I don't really like that. I could come back and just say, hey, I want to go back to that version that I created previously. Instead of having to click undo, undo, redo, undo, redo, you know, going all the way back, I can just say this is the version I want to use, and it reloads that older version that you had. So that's in order to get that to come up, you do have to do file and then save. Uh, show grid, I really appreciate it, especially for us high C's that want to make sure everything is exactly on the same line. Like I want this font to be exactly the same line as this. So I can come in here and now I'm actually spacing down and you can see then using the grid in the background, you know, making sure that everything lines up. And if I want to turn that off, I can just go back in and unshow the grid. As far as some other options, manage bleed, that's used for print assets. If you're printing things like postcards or flyers, um, your printer most likely will tell you how much of a bleed that they want. That way you make sure that if for any reason the paper gets loaded into the printer just slightly off, that there's not white on the right, left, top, or bottom of your asset. And then check print quality. I've done this a couple of times. I haven't really figured out how to find what the issue is. Uh, but for some reason it's saying, hey, this logo looks good, uh, but this one may not. So this might be an image that's just not quite high HD enough or high quality enough. So right now this is just a social media post. The print quality is not necessarily something that I need to be concerned about. But if I was going to print high quality postcards or something along those lines, I would probably want to make sure that I came in here and checked the print quality. And if the photos that I was using for those um, print assets were not HD enough or high quality or, or uh, you know, high enough pixel count, then I might want to go in and utilize a different graphic to make sure that it printed really, really well. Um, up here at the top, we do have the ability to change the name of this graphic. So if I click there, I can say test Facebook, come on in, right? And maybe I just want to call that version one. Um, I can click here to download. I think I've shown this previously, but let me just show you. You have the ability to download a JPEG, a PNG, or a PDF. Share, this is interesting. Um, you can actually share the design image link. So I think of this as if I was, um, maybe I'm an assistant on a team and I'm in charge of creating design assets that I want to then get approval on from, I don't know, the, the Rainmaker or something along those lines. I could create this design click on this link, copy it, and then I could send it to my Rainmaker. The Rainmaker would then pull up the graphic using the link and they can fully see it, right? How's it gonna look? What's it gonna look like? And then they can say, okay, yep, run with it. Or nope, I don't like that. Change this, change that. They can't really make the changes and more often than not, they probably don't want to, but they could email back and say, hey, um, can we use a different image? Can we use a different font? Whatever they may have to do. Um, same thing with the project. If they share the project, then you can copy that link. And when they come in and paste it, right, they can then see the entire graphic, but they have the ability then, whoever you've shared it with, has the ability to click in this right-hand corner and they can now download this graphic, they can print it, or they can share it. Um, be careful about sharing it. I think that these are still not 100% when you go to share. So my um, recommendation is always to download the graphic and then share it or utilize it however you had um, planned with regards to whether it was a Facebook graphic, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, etc. So that's it for today, guys. Hope everyone having an amazing and happy New Year day. And uh, I got a football game to go watch with my wife, go Bears, and uh, we'll see how Baylor does. That's pretty much it, guys. As always, I'll look forward to talking to you in the morning. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your night.